All right, hi, it's me again um, with the spiral magnet motor. And um, I don't know if anybody noticed, but in my last video, I had the spiral. This guy's in attraction mode to to the spiral, and obviously it pulses um, the opposite with with the coil. And this is just a test coil that I made. It's got steel rods in it. But let me fire this guy up. And it does a weird thing when it first fires. Oh, it's going the wrong way. There it goes. Oh, there it goes. Um, I had the spiral facing in the opposite direction. Um, and, and I was always under the impression that the direction of spin should be the angle in which your spiral is pointing, if you're going to point it at all. And because this is in a traction mode, and it spins this way, because as it gets closer, obviously, to the magnets that it's attracted to, produces the spin, it should be pointing in that direction. If I'm wrong, somebody please tell me. You can see the little puppy flies. And again, this is just my test coil. It just has um, 22 gauge wire wrapped around it about 500 times. Um, and it has um, steel cores. And then over here, I have my other coil and it's drying. I got the iron filings I showed you in the last video with a little resin. It's a nice coil. Um, and so here's my little workshop area. This is my um, this is my coil winder and it's motorized. It's not the greatest thing in the world but it works. I mean, various rotors I have laying around that I've made. This is one of my first ones that I tried to do um, with anti-gearing with another one to try to, you know, taper it down and see if I can't get some extra power out. This is the old work area. Bunch of coils that I made. A whole bunch of just different test coils. This is my Daphnam Bedini circuit. It's a mess. And anyway, so back to the Back to the spinner here, I like to call it. Again, there's my commuter, and it's just it's just two that it's just two magnets on either end. Here's the reed switch. And uh, uh oh. Something went wrong. I seem to be burning out my um my um my power supply. Oh uh, you know what? Maybe the commuter moved. I don't know, because it looks like it's still doing something. There we go, it's going the other way. You know what? Burnt out my reed switch. It's the second one. Gonna have to start building some of my own reed switches. Um, Andrea uh, uh, Gonora, Ganora, I think is his name, shows us how to do it on the tube. And second one, I burnt this guy out over here, uh, bending up the ends and it cracked and if any air gets in here forget it it sticks automatically and I noticed that 12 volts these things don't last very long so it's that for the old reed switch and looks like I think I might have fixed this other one but again at 12 volts it's not gonna last too long all right there you go I don't know I guess I didn't burn out the reed switch I don't know. I think sometimes the commuter just slides because it isn't really stuck in place. Or maybe the reed switch does get stuck. I don't know. Somebody could tell me once in a while this thing would just stop. I'll turn off the power supply, mess with it a little bit, turn it back on, see there it goes now. So I'm not sure if it's the commuter just moving. Here, let me check it. Yeah, that's what happened. I burnt the reed switch out because I'm. This guy is as hot as a match, and I put this guy on just to test it, and without even spinning it, it's hot, which means that the reed switch is fused. All right, now I'm gonna have to come up with something better than a reed switch. I thought the reed switch would be the way to go. But it's just um, 12 volt. Well, actually, what I probably need to do 
is have a way to discharge the spark and um, put it off into a, a bulb or something so that it has some place to go other than just frying itself. Um, I think I've seen people talk about that. All right. Any help? Greatly appreciated. Thanks.